Hi, Anders. Hi, how are you? Hi, Selma. Hello. And hi. Hi, Anton. Take a seat. Thank you. Feel comfortable. Happy customers. You've heard that before, and now I'm having one here with me, all the way from Sweden. I'm quickly introducing the three of you. Anders, as said, yeah. you are from Sweden. That's where Correct. Tetra Pak is based with headquarters. You're the head of marketing and sales enablement in the, uh, in the unit automation and digitalization. Yeah. Then we have Anton Siering. He's the consultant and project manager, digital services at Siemens. Correct. And last but not least, we have Salma Khan. She's the head of marketing for motion control services at Siemens. Correct. Thanks. <laughs> and Salma is always good for surprises when it comes to bringing happy customers on site. Um, we already were in Nuremberg at the SPS. Um, we had a customer joining us, but I think you're going to refer to the project because it's yours and you tell us a bit about it. Thanks, Christina. Definitely at SPS, we have the happy customer on this stage. And today also we have <laughs> Tetra Pak with us here. And I am really uh, honored and happy to have Anders from Tetra Pak together with us because we are going to show to our, our audience here and also those who are watching us online via the live stream, that how our predictive maintenance offerings, uh, condition monitoring for drive systems in this case, are contributing to optimize the operation and maintenance process at Tetra Pak, and how jointly we are together creating value for their customers in the market. To give a little bit of the background, mm -hmm. Tetra Pak is, for Siemens, one of the top partners in food and beverage industry. And it's not a secret, they are the world leaders when it comes to food packaging and processing solutions. And a very unique customer type for us because um, they have their own factories and uh, as end users, plus they are operating as OEM and system integrator in the market. So well, that's a lot on the list of you, Anders. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> we started our collaboration at their factories in the end user side, and we are further strengthening that uh, collaboration. Am I right, Anders? Yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah. So uh, being here, it means uh, taking our partnership one step further. And uh, through my history in automation and digital in Tetra Pak, Siemens has always been on the right-hand side of us, yeah, helping us. Uh, the first starting point when we learn about how to work with condition monitoring is to start with our own factories. And uh, Anton coming back to that with the proof of concept we're having as well. But we, as, as a leading supplier of packaging and processing and service solutions to food and beverage customers, we need to put the right solutions together to work with our customers as well. So we learn from our own experiences, work with Siemens, and we take it to our customers. Over years, uh, people operating on the shop floor, uh, they need information. We help them re with uh, remote services. But even better is if we can predict things before they happen. And that's where condition monitoring comes into play where we need to embed those solutions into our equipment mm -hmm. and into the services so that we can provide the right solutions to our customers as well. Mm -hmm. So, talking about condition monitoring service, we have implemented at Tetra Pak a very special solution. That's Anton, true. can you unveil sure. the secrets yeah, yeah. there. Sure, sure. That's a very good question. And uh, basically, I have to admit that Tetra Pak always been a very innovative, forward-looking and also challenging partner for us. Our um, collaboration in regards to digitalization started a while ago. And uh, at that point of time, Tetra Pak was actually looking for real-time asset monitoring for prevention, prediction of breakdowns, uh, but of course also AI-based maintenance. And those are exactly values uh, which or um, areas, let me say, where Siemens can provide the most value add to its customers. Um, but let me, let me go a little bit more into the detail, I guess. Um, so to mitigate risks during the scaling up phase, we decided to create, first of all, the common understanding and the bigger picture of where Tetra Pak is standing on right now. 
Um, and after succeeding this, this first step, um, now we are co-creating a solution for the connectivity basically to critical assets in the, in the field, uh, in the manufacturing, but also um, we try to, um, to establish purely data-driven maintenance and AI-based maintenance. And uh, um, our goal is actually to create a closed-loop application where we have a transparency, where we have a data extraction from fields, um, where we're sharing the data across the enterprise globally also. Um, and then we are trying to engage also the maintenance personnel into this loop so they are they know exactly when we have some deviations from the current state, from the normal state of, of the assets in the manufacturing, and we're also providing some, some actions which are to be taken to correct those, those deviations. But I don't want to, to go too much into the detail because I guess Salma, Salma. has some, some more insights for us. I have some surprise. Um, we have also at our uh, FAIR model this solution. We are exhibiting that, and I already aligned with Karsten. Mm -hmm. He is waiting there to show to our audience what so is all about. Let's see Anton at the exhibit at the fair booth, just right in the center of the booth, actually. Carsten, are you with us? I hear him and I see him. Welcome to our booth. I would like to show you some <laughs> example of predictive services for drive systems. What we do here is taking data from drive and motors from the drivetrain and promoting it via serial interface to the new Semantic FDE gateway. The Semantic FDE gateway promotes the data via the standard interface MQTT to the Brownfield connectivity gateway. This is basically a software application running on a standard industrial PC, and it can send the data anywhere where it's needed. In our case, it's an industrial edge application where we collect the raw data from the drive and calculate some anomaly score in case the operation is out of bounds. We also can even calculate with an artificial intelligence some more uh, information like the bearing temperatures which are not measured or details of the temperature of the winding. So you can see what's going on in your motor without any more instrumentation. It's an out-of-the-box application to show what is possible with predictive services. That's all for now. Let's go back to the stage to Salma. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carsten, for explaining it very well. And I hope the audience can visualize it now better, how we take data from the field and up to the cloud level and create some value out of that. And uh, Christina, I would like to emphasize here on one point, mm -hmm. that every factory has the hidden potential for optimization of its operation and maintenance processes. And data availability, analysis, and usage in the right way is the key to tap that potential. Our service experts in the market help the customers to see that potential and increase their savings at every small step be it the reduction of downtimes, fault diagnosis and analysis, um, cost optimized after sales service, prolongation of maintenance intervals, and so on. And all these small bits and pieces contribute together to the bigger goal of sustainability mm -hmm. that we all have in the market. Definitely. And we, we had that sustainability <laughs> and collaboration. That's like the red thread, which is running through all the presentations since we started yesterday at a quarter past 11 yeah. on that stage here. Yeah. Make, makes it close to our heart as well because sustainability is something we drive into the food and beverage of industry course. and are asked to work with as well. So it falls very much hand in hand there. Mm -hmm. Especially, I mean, thinking mm. about, and we talked about um, the production of the Tetra Pucks. Yeah. It's not just paper. There is a lot other um, a lot of things layers, going on, yeah. Which, which are on top of the cardboard boxes, Definitely. like aluminium and um, plastics. So you need to cater for sustainable solutions yeah. here, for sure. So talking about maintenance and predictive maintenance, coming back to the topic again, <laughs> and applying the, the field data to predict maintenance and required maintenance. I'm wondering what's in the pipeline then. What else is, is going on? Anton, I think that's your take here. 
Um, yes, that's that's true, and this is another great question from you, Christina. And um, usually, I would say the future is unpredictable, but this is not for us. Um, our partnership is basically defined by challenges Anders already mentioned, uh, but also by uh, by the key targets of the end customers, which is productivity, quality, and of course, environmental impact or security. Um, but we also would like to base our further uh, partnership on the experience we've gathered so far. Um, and so uh, what we're looking at right now is basically to extend our partnership from the starting point, which is the internal facilities of Tetra Pak, to another business areas of Tetra Pak, such as um, uh, Tetra Pak as an OEM. And uh, this is basically what is on our roadmap right now. And I guess, Anders, is that... Is that the, the plan? Does it sound like a plan for you? It, it does for sure, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, for us in Tetra Pak, when we look at it, the natural starting point, as I said before, is to continue the work we do in our own factories. But the big difference we will make when we take it out to our customers, all the customers we have around the world, because here we build packaging machines, we build processing equipment, and we also know the domain knowledge around how to pr produce, yeah. how to process and pack the food. And, and those, by adding, if it's a sensor, if it's measuring something, and drive condition monitoring, that will make a big, big difference in the service offers we will have to our customers as well. And honestly, we will not be able to do this without partnership with our customers, mm -hmm. but also partnership with Siemens. So that, that's really a true partnership in my mind. Yeah. I mean, we talked about yesterday yeah. um, when we prepared for that session here, how, how fruitful this is and how long Tetra Pak actually is working together. It's not just because this project team here, what did you say? How long have you been working together? Uh, very long, uh, a month or so. Maybe a month, <laughs> yeah. yes. And already willing to talk about success <laughs> stories on stage. But Tetra <laughs> yeah. Pak also quite a long-term company, global player, uh, for 25 years, you say, there is one key account manager at Tetra Park. Exactly. Yeah. Just taking care yeah. of Siemens and vice versa. So definitely... Yeah, so it's a very, very strong and very long partnership. And which, obviously, it continues. <laughs> which is always great. And what I liked is what you said, yeah. the way forward is to learn from our factories. And here, our technology again comes into play. And Christine, looking at the time, yes. now, I would like to summarize the two main messages for our audience here. First part is related to our predictive maintenance offerings, that um, what kind of uh, benefits the customers are achieving already at the moment in the market. It's related to uh, increased system availability, reduction of maintenance effort and cost, um, improved health of assets and field devices. In a nutshell, they can do cost-optimized smart maintenance. That's one part. And the other and more important part is, and it's also our way forward in the market, is that together with Tetra Pak as a partner, we are combining the real and digital worlds to maximize the value creation for our common customers in the market. <laughs>